that cannot cheat. But I tell you, were I not the better part may mercy, I should not seek an absent argument of my revenge thou possess. But look to it. Find out thy brother, wheresoever he is. Seek him with candle, or bring him dead or living. Within this club month, or turn thou no more to find him living in our territory. Thy lands, and all things that thou dost call thine, were seizure to a season to our hands. So thou canst quit thee by thy brother's mouth. Of what we think against thee? Oh, your highness, knew my heart in this. I never loved my brother in my life. More villain thou. Well, push him out the doors, and let my officers of such an estate in nature make an extent upon his house and lands. Do this expediently, and turn the go. there my verse, in witness of my love. And thou, O moon, survey with thy chaste eye from thy pale sphere above, the name that holds my life and swear. O Rosalind, these trees shall be my boats, and in their barks my thoughts I'll bear, that every eye in which this forest looks shall see thy virtues, and thy, thy virtue witnessed everywhere. Run, run, Orlando, to carve on every tree, the fair, the chaste, the unexpressive sheep. Life, Master Truly, Shepherd, in respect of itself, it is a good life, but in respect that it is a shepherd's life, it is not. <laughs> in respect that it is in the field, it pleases me well, but in respect that it is not in the court, it is tedious. In respect that it is private, it is a good life, but in respect that it is solitary, it is a very vile life. As it is a spare life, look you, it fits my humor well, but as there is no more plenty in it, it goes much against my stomach. Hast any philosophy in thee, Shepherd? No more but than what I know. The more one sickens, the worse at ease he is. And that he that wants money, means and content, is without three good friends. That the property of rain is to wet, fire, to burn. The good pastures makes fat sheep. And that a great cause of the night is lack of the sun. And that he that <laughs> hath learned no wit by nature nor art, a complain of good breeding, or comes of a very dull kindred. Such a one is a natural philosopher. <laughs> Wast ever in a court, shepherd? No, truly. Then thou art damned. Nay, I hope. Truly, thou art damned like a, damned like an ill roasted egg, all on one side. <laughs> not being in court, your reason? Why, if thou never wast at court, thou never sawest good manners. And if thou never sawest good manners, thy manners must be wicked. And wickedness is sin, and sin is damnation. Thou art on a part of the state, shepherd. Not a whit touched up. Those that are good manners at the court are as ridiculous in the country as a baby. The country is most mockable at the court. You told me you salute not at court, but you kiss your hands. The courtesy would be uncleanly. The courtiers, courtiers will be shepherds. Instance, brief, calm, instance. Why? You're still handling our ewes. They're fells, you know, are greasy. Why do not your courtier's hands sweat? And is not the grease of a mutton as wholesome as the sweat of a man? Shallow, shallow. A better instance, I say. Come. Besides, our hands are hard. Your lips will feel them the sooner. Shallow again. A more sounder instance. Come. And they are often tarred over with the surgery of our sheep. Would you have us kiss tar? The courtier's hands are perfumed with civet. Most shallow man, learn of the wise and pen. Civet is of a baser birth than tar, being made from the very uncleanly flex of a cat. Many the instance, shepherd. You have to courtly a whip. I'll rest. Wilt thou rest, damn? God help thee, shallow man. God make incision in thee. Thou art raw. Sir, I am a true laborer. I earn that I eat, get that I wear, own no man hate, envy no man's happiness, glad with other men's good, content with my heart. And the greatest of my pride is to see my ewes great and my lambs suck. That is another simple sin in you, to betray a she lamb of the twelve month to a crooked painted old cuckoldly ram out of all reasonable match. If thou beest not done for this, the devil himself will have no shepherds. I can't see else how thou shouldst escape. Here comes young Master Ganymede, my new mistress's brother. From the east to the western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Her worth being mounted on the wind, through all the world nerves Rosalind. All the pictures, fairest line, are but black to Rosalind. Oh, rhyme you so eight years together. 
dinners, suppers, and sleeping hours accepted. Out, fool. For a taste, if a heart do lack a hind, let him seek out Rosaline. If the cat will after kind, so be sure we're Rosaline. Winter garments must be lined, so must slender Rosaline. They that reap a sheaf and bind, then to cart with Rosaline. Sweet as nut hath sourest rind, such a nut is Rosaline. <laughs> Why do you infect yourself with them? Peace, you dog fool, I found them on a tree. Truly, the tree yields bad fruit. <laughs> Thou bringest me out of tune. You know that I am a woman 
when I think I must speak. Sweet, say on. You bring me out. Soft. Comes he not either. Tis he. Slave by and note him. I thank you for your company, but good faith I had as leave had been myself alone. And so had I. But yet, for fashion's sake, for fashion's sake, I thank you too for your society. God be with you. Let me eat as little as we can. <laughs> I do desire we may be better strangers. <laughs> I pray you, mar no more trees with your writing love songs in their barks. I pray you, mar no more of my verses reading them ill favor. Rosalind is your love's name? Yes, just. I do not like her name. There was no thought of pleasing you when she was christened. What stature is she of? Just as high as my heart. You have a nibble wit. I think she was made of Atalanta's heels. Will you sit down with me? We too will rail against our mistress, the world, and all our misery. I will chide no breather, and I will chide no breather in the world but myself, against whom I know most faults. The worst fault you have is to be love. It is a fault I will not change for your best virtue. I am weary of you. By my troth, I was seeking for a fool when I found you. He is drowned in the brook. Look but in, and you shall see. Them. <laughs> I shall see my own figure. Which I take either to be a fool or a side. I'll tarry no longer with you. Farewell, good sinew and love. I'm glad of your departure. <laughs> <laughs> I will speak to him. Now loathe him. 
than forswear him and spit at him. And thus I drove my suitor from his mad humor of love to a living humor of madness, which was to forswear to the full stream of the world and to live in a nook, merrily monastic. And thus I cured him. <laughs> and this way will I take upon myself to wash your liver as clean as a sound sheep's heart, so that thou not should be one spot of love in it. I would not have cured you. I, I would cure you if you would but call me Rosalind and come every day to my coat and woo me. Now, but please, my love, I will. Tell me where it is. I will show it to you. And by the way, you should tell me where in the forest you live. Will you go? Now, with all my heart, you. Come, Sister Shepherdess. Will you go? <laughs> your goats on. And how are you? Am I the man yet? Doth my simple feature content you? Your features? Lord, <laughs> warrant us what features? When a man's verse cannot be understood, nor a man's good wit seconded with understanding, it strikes a man more dead than a great reckoning in a little room. Truly, what the gods is no key poetical. I do not know what poetical is. Is it honest indeed in word? Is it a true thing? No, truly. For the truest poetry is the most famous. And lovers are given to poetry, and what they swear in poetry as lovers, they may fain. Do you wish, then, that the gods had made me poetical? I do, truly. For thou swear to me thou art honest. Now, if thou wert a poet, I might have some hopes out its fame. Would you not have me honest? No, unless thou wert more favorite. To have honesty coupled to beauty is to have honey a sauce to sugar. Well, I'm not fair. Therefore, I pray the gods make me honest. Well, be it as it may, I will marry thee. Will you be very proudly? Go thou with me and let me counsel thee. Come, sweet God, <laughs> we must be married. We must live in Baudry. <laughs> <laughs> sitting by me on the turf, praising the proud, disdainful shepherdess. That was his mistress. Well, and what's up then? As you'll see, a pageant truly played between the pale complexion of true love and the red glow of scorn and proud disdain. Go hence a little. I shall conduct you. You will mark it. Oh, come, let us remove. The sight of lovers feedeth those in love. Let us bring us to this sight, and you shall see I'll prove a busy actor in their life. Thou tellest me there's 
murder in mine eye. Tis pretty sure and very probable that eyes that are the frailest and softest things who shut their coward gates on atomies should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do find thee with all my heart, and if my eyes can wound, then let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon, why not fall down? Or if thou canst not, oh, for shame, for shame, why not to say mine eyes are murderers? Now show the wound mine eye hath made of thee, scratch thee but with a pin, and there remains some scar of it. But now mine eyes, which I have darted at thee, hurt thee not, nor I am sure, there is no force in eyes that can do hurt. Oh, dear Phoebe, if you ever be in some fresh cheek of hot with color of fancy, then shall you know the wounds invisible that love's keen arrows make. But till that time, come not thou near me, and when that time comes, afflict me with thy mocks, pity me not, as till that time I shall not pity thee. And why, I pray you, who might your mother that you insult, exult, that once over the wretched? What thought have you no beauty? As by my faith, I see no more in you than without candle make our go dark to bed. Must you therefore be proud and pitiless? Why? What means this? Why do you look at me? I see no more in you than the ordinary of nature's sail work. Oh, it's my little life. I think she means to tangle my eyes too. <laughs> no. Faith proud mistress. Hope not after it. Tis not your inky brows, your black silk hair, your bugle eyeballs, or your cheek of cream that can entain my spirit to your worship. <laughs> you foolish shepherd, wherefore do you follow her? Like foggy south, puffing with wind and rain. Would have gone near to fall in love with him, 
But for my part, I hate him not, nor love him not. And yet, I have more cause to hate him than to love him. For what had he to do to chide at me? I marvel why I answered not again. But that's all one. Omittance is no quittance. I'll write to him a very taunting letter. And thou shalt bear, wilt thou, Silvius? <laughs> Phoebe, with all my heart. I'll write it straight. The matter's in my head and in my heart. I'll be bitter with him and pass him short. Go with me, Silvius. Never come in my sight 